So the big news uh, today and what knocked us all on our collective butts uh, was that uh, what was funny is that last night as I started prepping for the show, knowing Jason would be at, I started seeing little bits of rumors of uh, features from Android O, the next version of the Android operating system, starting to leak out. And I thought that was going to be the main thrust of this segment uh, on the show. But then sure enough, this morning, Android O dropped on us. Like Christmas coming early, uh, Google released the Android O developer preview. Uh, so the next version of Android, Android, Android version 8, um, also, you know, no code name yet, just called O. Uh, the developer preview version hit. And it is now available for download and install. Uh, and, and everyone has been scrambling to check it out. Uh, which is very was very fun to watch all of friends of the show and Android coverage folks scrambling today <laughs> to try to to try to cover it. Although it's um, interesting to note that Android O this year is not doing the huge uh, person preview as I call it, which is everybody can use it and check it out and beta it and well, yeah, it was the rest of developers. Yeah. Yeah, that was on the rundown. It's after this part, but I was gonna say, yeah, it's not part of the beta <laughs> program yet. Uh, it's it's probably gonna move to that in May. Uh, but so for now, what it is, it's it's you can download it and install it if you are uh, adventurous enough to do that. Uh, but it's mainly meant for developers. It is a dev developer preview uh, to allow developers to get a sense of what's coming in the next version of the operating system and then start to adjust their apps in time for it. And we went through this with with uh, with Android N. There were several rounds of developer preview where people were test driving it, and then it, it eventually got better and better, and it got into the beta track and that sort of thing. So it's a similar process. Um, I was surprised, though, that this is coming out so far ahead of I.O. I thought this would happen closer to I.O., well, this um, happened last year too, didn't it? Yeah, I think it, it did. did. It was about like yeah. late March, early April. And I mean, IO at this point feels just around the corner. It does, yeah. Yeah, so, if I remember correctly, last year we all got knocked out of our butts too. We we all it, it dropped and dropped, and we were all like, oh God, we got to install it ASAP right yeah. around this time of year. And that was the beta yeah. that everybody could jump into. Yep. I mean, at least now we have some time to prepare our phones and our devices for when the beta does come to us in May. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it does and, come. <laughs> and I, I, believe, I believe the announcement was that it's available and it will work on, um, uh, or no, when it hits the Android beta program, it's going to work on the Pixel, the Pixel XL, the Nexus 6P, Nexus 5X, the Pixel C, and the Nexus Player once it's released into the beta program. So that's something to look forward to if you are on one of those devices. But I figure let's do a quick dive in yes. some of the early reviews on yes. the, the the functionality changes and the changes of the operating system because there are a lot and there's some really exciting stuff. So I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly give a highlight of what the change is and then let's discuss it and then we'll move on because there's so much to go through. So much. Um, Rapid okay. Fire. So for, boom. So so first off, the 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 biggest one I I, I prioritize these by the ones that I felt were important. Mm -hmm. But uh, noti notification channels. So basically, they're introducing a framework to group together notifications by types. And so that if you have notifications for news apps, you can group them into a news app or, or for messaging. And you could set rules for these notification types in different ways, uh, basically giving you even more control over notifications. Uh, Mark, what do you think of notification channels? I think it's exactly what we needed. I think this is one of the like, if there was if you remember in the system UI tuner you could turn on the really fine grained notification controls. I think uh, this is a great step in the correct direction. Uh, I like the idea of of treating your notifications the same way that you treat the different categories in inbox. Like it seems like the same idea to me. And then if well, you're if, if there's ro rules that I can set so that I can say like hey send me my news at six p.m. or don't bother me with anything social after nine or ten like. Whew, Primo, I'm excited. That's good stuff. Moving on. Yeah. Flo, what do you think of the notifications? I mean, notifications are the bane of the Android existence. Beside, oh, and the software updates, but we don't well, really yeah, mention well, that all. anymore because it makes us too yeah. sad. Uh, every day, I'm like clearing notification after notification. I, I mean... <sighs> Which is, which is funny you say that, though, because I literally had a conversation today with an iOS user in reaction to the changes with Android O, and he's like, oh, God, your guys' notifications is so much better than iOS. He's like, yeah, I would kill for, totally. he's like, I would kill for, I would kill for the level of control you have, and it drives me crazy that you guys are innovating on notification way more than Apple is, which I think is totally yeah. true. I think that this is, an in, this is an innovation that we haven't seen at the OS level and is, is super exciting. 
But I bet yeah, you when iOS a lot of people... launched the notification Sorry. center, everybody was like, oh, you guys just knocked off Android. Everybody yeah. got upset with Apple because the notification center knocked off Android. Like, I think the notifications in Android are great. I think the issue is the overwhelming issue of so many of them. I think I don't think that's just an Android thing. That's just a mobile user thing. Like, we just have an enormous amount of data coming at us in any given moment. So, so I think this is a good solution, though, because you have an, an enormous amount of notifications coming in, so you can group them and then control the way they're coming in. I think that's that's uh, right. genius. Agreed. All right, moving on. Um, adaptive icons. Uh, this oh, I thought oh, was oh. was really really cool. Um, it's so it's allowing developers to have different shape masks and effects on their icons. Um, so the app, so the app icons integrate better with OEMs and devices. But then oh. it's also gonna it's also gonna open the door for animations. And contextual changes. So imagine get seeing a calendar app with the day uh, that the, today's date on it, or a clock app with the time on it, or some sort of you know change in the animation or something like that. It's it's basically you know like like it says adaptive icons. Florence, you you ooed. Are you excited about this one? Well, yeah, because I'm just thinking about Samsung and LG and the way that they. Yeah. Sort of have ruined like the little, icons. Well, they have. I mean, sometimes people do <laughs> want to use their launchers, which is completely fine. You know, it's it's it, each to his own. I mean, that's the whole point of Android. But I don't like sometimes the way that they Google icons look alongside the other native icons, and so this just sounds like a nice way to make everything level yeah. on the internet. I think it's a herald of, of theming. I and think what a, theming and what a great way to solve such an annoying issue of, you know, fragmentation and just sort of this difference in design paradigms that live across different devices. You're like, yeah, I know it's super frustrating, but for some people that interface doesn't matter as much to them, but I can, I can see for Google having it be very important that whatever their product is looks good on everybody else's product. I think it's, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I do. Totally. I, I I do have to admit that Brian just typed in our little secret chat room. Yes. Uh, Windows Live tiles. Yeah, and that's I told a him, good point. Easy, yeah. easy, easy. <laughs> Windows Live tiles are very, very, very different. Those are at least uniform shapes. Like this is a very different story. It's a, it's a big problem. It's been a big problem on Android for a long time, and this is putting the power in developers' hands to be like, okay, cool. You don't want to make an a, an app icon that actually follows the material guidelines, which I mean, like Google has put an enormous amount of effort into making sure that designers have material guidelines and some of them just don't follow them. So now the developer can just be like, okay, cool, no problem. I'll just use adaptive icons and it'll adapt to whatever the thing is. So at the very least, it's a masked shape and not just a white circle background like we've been getting for the Play Store icons since yep. Nougat. Can I just Agreed. say that my mother's biggest complaint on Android <clears throat> is that she doesn't have a badge that lets her know how many messages she has? Oh, well, that's, wouldn't it be nice a, if that were in the developer preview? Hmm. That would be cool. Mm. That would be cool. Mm. Well, is it so wrong? I, I don't know. Maybe. No, it is. It totally is. <laughs> it, is. <laughs> it is. It totally is. I, I haven't installed it yet. I, I, I'm not. I'm not. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm on the Robin. I don't want to mess with it. So I'm operating <laughs> off of what I found. But yeah, no. But with the adaptive oh, icons, sorry, you can have Ron. It. Yeah. That. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm trying to segue. I was trying to transition. Anyway, okay, well, let's move it on. Um, oh. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump ahead actually to stick with the design themed kind of changes. Uh, font resources, uh, which I think this is as a font nerd myself, this is a, amazingly interesting. It's gonna allow font resources to be powered by XML to enable full resource type, which basically gives designers way more control over fonts and styles. Previously, if you remember, they we were limited to, limited to Roboto and all the font packages within Android. Now opening it up and allowing them to define fonts and styles via XML allows a lot more leverage in the design. Yeah. So, I like it that. It does. One. Also, <laughs> but in the same vein, the wide gamut color stuff uh, is a big deal for a lot of the same reasons, but also because basically every time I'm on the show, I feel like we talk about how devices have hit this like diminishing point, diminishing returns point. Uh, and this is one of the things that makes these displays that are already well past the PPI for our retinas. Now we yep. have another another thing to differentiate them, to separate them out. Like having access to colors that other devices just can't display, I think is a big deal, especially with it, with Samsung's like kick butt displays. I said butt. Yeah, and so to clarify on that, it's the support for wide gamut color profiles, um, which is going to be really crucial for folks who are doing photo editing and image editing mm -hmm. on their devices. And it's uh, right out of the gate, it's going to support profiles for Adobe RGB, Profoto RGB, and DCI P3. So folks who work in color profile stuff, that's super, super mm -hmm. important. So that's, that's really cool. Um, 
So moving back down the list, autofill APIs. So oh. now uh, users are gonna be able to choose a source for their autofill data. Um, so that when an application that needs to store and retrieve this sort of data, it doesn't need to act as an accessibility service, which is, is huge, huge for like for like password managers and things like that, right, Mark? Or? So huge. LastPass, Dashlane, one password, all such a big deal. Like right now, in order to sign into something that the app doesn't recognize as a login field, every once in a while you've got to tap the different fields to even get it to show up. And then beyond that, if if you're lucky and it does do that, you've got to tell LastPass or whatever the app is, hey, associate this app with this login. LastPass has to do the work. That that'll be a thing of the past now. With an autofill API, it should be fairly simple for the for the app to be like, hey, I volunteer as tribute. Yep. <laughs> 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 so move, move it along Flo you're on a Chromebook now these days right I am I'm using one right now what are one of the what is one of the functions that you would love to have at the OS level in your Chromebook keyboard navigation maybe maybe say yes Flo maybe. say yes sure say yes. how do you how could you I don't understand how you can be using a Chromebook and not be frustrated at the lack of of arrow and tab key navigation like a laptop and now with Android O, they're gonna. It is. It have, is a small thing, but when you become yep. anyway, when you become used to the touch screen. Sorry, go on. Yes, Android O. <laughs> well, no, I was I, I was gonna what I was gonna say is that it, that this is a key Chromebook level support in the operating system to show that Android will continue to develop on Chromebooks and have support for laptop esque navigation like using arrow keys and tab keys and keyboard controls. Right, this is a herald of the convergence as as more right. and more Android apps, like as Google asks Android developers to make sure that Android apps even do run yeah. on Chromebooks. Like this is another reason to do it. Which I'm now, Flo, I, I want to sit down mm. and watch you work because I don't know how you can exist without arrow keys yeah, and tab. Yeah, Because I'm upset. Like I need tab, the tab key is one of the, my most, pre like it's always a little like rub, the, the text is rubbed off because I hit tab so much. Yeah. You know what? Now I'm, start, I'm starting to think about just what it is that- touching? <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm trying starting to think about like, for instance, today I was trying out, um, I was using Google Photos on this Chromebook and yep. I was arrowing through it. And I think part of the reason I was like, well, what's the issue? I can do that already with the, it's a Google app that I was using. So of course ah. I can tab and arrow through. That's why I was a little confused when we started talking about it because I was thinking, mm. what are you talking about, Ron? I can do that already right. on my Chromebook, but it just turns out it's because it was a Google app. Right, but so now it's at the OS yeah, level. Well, other, that's, other apps. Yep. Yeah, and you make a good point. That is going to get Android developers to think about the fact that they are also developing for this platform right here. Exactly. Yeah, Maybe we'll really finally nice. get some Android apps that are halfway decent for large displays. Yep. Yeah, oh, that's that's another story for another day uh, oh. regarding the Android apps on Chromebook. <laughs> is this Chromebook image on this article? Is this of your Chromebook, Florence? Yes, because it's, I see of, the it's of my Chromebook on a I see the Pokemon blanket. trading card game in the in the dock <laughs> there. Were you working or playing? <laughs> yes, I have Pokemon the card game constantly docked on every single Android compatible device that I have in my house. And you know what? Before we started the show, I was talking to somebody about Pokemon the card game online and I have no shame. Well, we'll we'll uh, we'll talk about it after the show. We'll we exchange yeah, handles. That, much, yeah. We will. So there's more more important things to there's, discuss. There's so, um, there definitely is like like picture in picture on Android O, which you can oh do goodness. on Android TV, but now you can do it on your Android device. You yep. can play Pokemon the trading card game and watch a YouTube video at the same time. And I'm probably going to do that. Which is I which is wait. really which is really interesting because this is something that's been available on Android TV and now yeah. it's going to be available at the OS level on phones. So that's so it's interesting to see the the stuff that they've got working on other platforms starting to spread out across all devices with Android O. That con that convergence again, like Mark mentioned. Um, another important one is WebView enhancements. So there's going to be improved mm -hmm. multi-process modes for WebView, including uh, developer level APIs for unique errors and crashes. Which me being a huge proponent of progressive web apps, the WebView is crucial to that. So it's even mm -hmm. more control on the WebView side of things, uh, which is great. Um, what would an Android operating system update be without something to deal with the battery, right? So right. This time Literally every time. <laughs> yeah, so this time it's taking the form of background limits, uh, which is basically going to restrict activities an application wants to do while it's in the background. And the idea being that that will limit your battery drain when the app isn't actually you know, in the foreground being used. It's going to have limits on implicit broadcasts. 
uh, which is sending signals for other apps or activities to act upon. It's going to limit background services, so the activities that an app can continue to run when it's not on screen, as well as location updates, where it's checking to see you know where you are while you're using Android's location services. That's um, the big so that's one, it. I think. Yeah, that's huge. That's potentially huge. Yeah, don't use apps updates. when I'm at home. I don't need you to do anything when I'm at home. Yep. So then a couple Just other sleep. things. Um, improved connectivity. Uh, it's going to support high-quality Bluetooth, uh, which is great. It's going to support network-aware networking, uh, which is basically a Wi-Fi protocol that allows network uh, devices to communicate without a central access point. Which that's is, a sleeper hit right there, dude. That's right, a sleeper and, hit. And why, <laughs> why is that? Why, why is, is that? that, Mark? That is that – is, Apple AirDrop for Android. That's Android Drop. That Ooh. that's enabling Wi-Fi direct connectivity. No more garbage with having to pair to a Bluetooth thing at all anymore. Don't have to worry about where the NFC antenna is on my device. Every device has Wi-Fi. If you're nearby, I can be like, "Yo, do you want to Wi-Fi me?" And then we can Wi-Fi each other. Yep. Ooh. And it's also important for IoT in terms of config configuring your Google Home. Just take, you know, like we got a glimpse of this with the Google Home setup, but with other devices, you want to set up your Nest, you want to set up yep. smart things, you want to set up any sort of IoT, allowing the devices to talk to each other via Wi-Fi without having to go through the central hub is amazing. Yeah, um, and so that that's, way that's, it's I, so much easier for setup, for communication on down the line. Like each one can be responsible for talking to themselves without like, something like a smart, smart things hub. It's great. Yep. And so then last, just to wrap it up, a couple of APIs, the audio API for pro audio. So professional audio folks who've been begging for Android to have better audio support. Uh, the new pro audio API is going to allow for high performance and low latency, latency audio. So we can finally see a GarageBand X-esque <laughs> recording kind of environment through Android devices, which I'm super excited about. And then lastly, uh, just support for the Java 8 API. Uh, so it's all the new Java language API support that comes with Java 8. So that, in a nutshell, is Android O. So based on that, early reviews flow, is it a hit or a miss? Well, I mean, <laughs> I, ha I, I don't think that this is going to be a significant launch the way that M was, Marshmallow was. Okay. To be honest, I think Nugget also now, is that, was. Now, is, is, that be, is that because it lacks a, a change to the visual design language? Like that we're entrenched in material, but we've got some design changes going on here. That's true. Like, I feel like this, I feel like O is bigger than Nougat. I feel like this is a bigger launch than 7. Well, I mean, right now we still have features sort of trickling out. And that's what I'm kind of yeah. waiting for. You know, it's it's it kind of is hard to tell in the developer preview. Because even Nugget seemed kind of, oh, Cool, multi window. Look at awesome. Right, Nougat. but the, no, Sorry. but the, but the thing is, is that but I, I feel like my hype level after reading this first developer preview batch between notification channels, <laughs> uh, the networking stuff, the the font control, the the um, API for store, you know, for autofills. I mean, these are I think really really big changes. I mean, I, I don't know, Mark, where are you net now between me and Flow? Are you hyped or are you I... kind of mad? I think I'm a little more hype. I, I agree. I think the last, uh, I think the last update. I think new girl, new girl. Is that how you say it? Uh, Nougat <laughs> was a, a, a nougat. <laughs> I think that was Go a ahead, very Gaston. like <laughs> sleeper update. I think it was very much a. Uh, <laughs> I think it was a, a lot of under the hood stuff. Uh, I remember covering a lot of things like with app installs, getting a lot of the like bits and bobs tightened up after Marshmallow. Um, I think this is a much bigger launch, and I'm. I'm really hoping there's more to it than this because I think there's a lot more that they can do that's on the on the higher end of of accessible uh, like you know small changes that they can make like these things like more font resources the adaptive icons one I think is huge um, it might not be a visual overhaul uh, but I, I think this one's going to seriously improve quality of life that's what we like in the gaming world if, if the UI and UX of the game actually change quality of life improves so I think that's it this is a quality of life update 